I think that the men and women who reject those ideals have a, a natural propensity to reject Christianity in general because they know that that's the basis of our liberties and of our freedoms. And if you are tyrannical in nature, uh, if you are dictatorial in nature, then obviously you have to cut to the root of that which is the source of liberty and freedom. And that, of course, is the principles of, of the Bible and the principles of natural law. And so we, I think that there is a natural tendency on the part of the people you're describing to target Christianity. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And it's a complete double standard because everything that they're denying Christians, they are readily uh, acquiescing to Muslims here in the United well, States. Well, that's the thing about political correctness. It's all selectively enforced. Feminists can have sex with whoever they want, objectify men, but you can't do it to them. I mean, it's just, it's just sick. And you look how bad a shape women are in now. It's just crazy. Pete in Indiana, you want to talk about 9-11. Go ahead. It is the 14th anniversary. I just wanted to comment. 9-11 is now commemorated as Patriots Day. And the irony of that is that since 9-11 and since the wars we've been involved in and since uh, our police have been militarized, that uh, Patriots Day is more like a slap in the face to people who are patriots and Exactly. Patriots Day sense. is April 19th. They now call this the new Patriots Day, and they talk about those that died, but not about those that died from the dust, not the prior knowledge, how it's been used to take our liberties. Absolutely. Chuck Baldwin, what do you think of 14 years after 9-11? I think that there's more questions unanswered than there are answered. I mean, I, you know, when I was traveling around 2008 as a candidate for president of the United States on the Constitution Party, I was asked that question quite a bit. And my standard response was, I'd just like for somebody in authority with some kind of, of documentation and scientific evidence to show me why Building 7 collapsed. I mean, we can't even get a, a straight answer from anybody. On I the talked to the deputy emergency manager. Now. He said they blew it up, and he was dead two weeks after he was on. Uh, Pete. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying nobody in, in an official capacity, nobody that, you know, they, they could have a, a, a real part in bringing some uh, solution closure. to the minds and closure to the minds and the hearts, especially the families of these victims, has even come close to providing a, a closure on any of this, including the most simple question about Building 7. So I think what we're dealing with 14 years later is the fact that more and more people are waking up and realizing that the, the official story just doesn't jive. There's more questions than, than there are answers, and the official story doesn't make sense. Sure. There's a, and and, and now... Up. The former head of defense intelligence and the former deputy head of the CIA came out and said our government runs al-Qaeda and ISIS and is protecting them and Obama's covering it up with Saudi Arabia. I mean, we got a coup in this country by Saudi Arabia, folks. I'm not saying entirely, but nobody talks ECN. about them. And boy, when we do, Visit let me tell you, they don't ECN like it. Live. We're going to be right back. Stay with us. Infowars.com. ChuckBaldwinLive.com. Take your phone calls for Chuck Baldwin. I'm Alex Jones. Mike in California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Perspective for a long time, and I don't know if, if either you understand what the actual issue is in this world, or if maybe you're just not giving it to the to the people. Because the truth is, the reason why this has been happening in this country and pretty much all over the West is because people just don't believe in God anymore. And so the truth is that the war is on God. It's a war on God, not a war on Christianity. So, you know, you're always talking about being uh, you're not anti-Islam, you're not Islamophobic. But the truth is that you either come off as um, ingenuous or you're ignorant about Muslim culture because, you know, um, I converted and I've been to a Muslim country before and I've seen what it actually produces. And Muslim people are actually people of faith. Let me ask you a question. Can I, can I, yeah. can I preach Christianity on the streets of uh, Saudi Arabia? Uh, as far as I know, not, not that I know, but see, he's a huge issue. No, you there. can't. In fact, it's an executable offense. Push it, push it can you teach Islam on the streets of California? Okay. You talk about Saudi Arabia. You're not to answer my like question. Here's what I don't like. I give Islam, and I know a lot of Muslims that are nice people, in a lot of ways they're more moral than what we've got here in this country. So I don't judge Muslims across the board, and I try to stop them from being invaded. I try to stop them from being taken over by the globalists and the class of civilizations. But the truth is, radical Islam is being allowed to take over and being allowed to persecute Christians, and I'm sick of it, and I'm tired of it, and I'm standing up for Christians. Now, I'm going to give Chuck Ball a response to what you said, Mike. I'll let you comment back. Well, he obviously doesn't know me very well, and he hasn't read too much of what I have to say because I, I've, I'm one that has taken a lot of grief from the right on my statement that 
there are many, many, many peace-loving Muslim people here in this country and around the world. There are. And that our foreign policy, our aggressive war doctrine, our preemptive invasions, our drone attacks, etc., this new world order machination that's being played out in the Middle East is doing more to create the radical Muslims that you're talking about. We are creating we, we created ISIS through our CIA, of course. And I'll Yeah, and that, that is well. to disease the good Islam, I guess you're talking about, sir, so there can be a clash of civilizations. We have all the documents. So right. that's what I'm saying. So I, what I'm saying is it, the gentleman needs to understand that that my position, and I, I think yours too, is we're not talking about Muslims in general. And we're not even attack. I'm, at least I'm not. I'm not even attacking the Muslim faith per se. But the, the radical implementation of Islam in this country is a problem. And it's created by a, a New World Order doctrine, which is bent on controlling the entire Western world under one global environment. And that includes London. It includes Saudi Arabia. It includes the United States. It includes Israel. And whenever we stop and realize that the, that the fallout of this, the blowback, the CIA term of this, is this perpetual war that we see going on. And in order yeah. to fight the perpetual war, we've got to have a police state erected. Yeah, it's a global destabilization. Great point. Chuck Baldwin, we're almost out of time. I wanted to have okay. Mike be able to counter back. Uh, Mike, the truth is a lot of Muslims want to defend the fact that a lot of Islam has become totalitarian. I'm against totalitarianism across the board. And the truth is you can't preach Christianity in Saudi Arabia. You can preach Islam here. So that's what I was saying. You keep talking about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has no, no part of this. You, you make it seem like... Saudi Arabia pretty much runs Islam. No, that's not true because no Muslim that I know really believes that Saudi Arabia is in control of anybody. Everybody knows that the Saudis are a bunch of degenerates and they do not run Islam. They don't, they don't represent the Muslim community. And you see, you're always talking about how the Saudis have a hand in ISIS. Well, so does the West, and so does Israel. So how, how all of a sudden uh, Saudi Arabia is the perpetrator? No, they're part of it, definitely. And most of the people Well, know sir, this. I mean, you yeah. say that we don't talk about a war on God here, and you say that we don't expose other people involved. I've been doing that the whole show today, so you must have been listening to another show. Better check your dial. ChuckBaldwinLive.com. Chuck, powerful uh, interview. Thanks for the time. God bless you. Thank you, Alex. Coming up, Rob Dew hosts the rest of the show. The next week, it's going to be uh, David Knight. They've all been doing a great job. He's covering 9 11. Another hour of the Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Rob Dew. I'm going to be in here for the rest of the hour live. You can either tune into your radio station if they carry it. If not, give them a call. Tell them to carry the fourth hour. If they're not carrying it, go to infowars.com forward slash show. And you can watch the whole thing live in TV. I'm going to have some articles here. We're going to play some 9 11 videos. Uh, we're going to have a a uh, guest on at the bottom of the hour who actually he's an, a TV guy in Britain and he refused to pay his BBC license back in 2013 because of the BBC's presentation and it's a video I'm going to show you in just a second and he says they had foreknowledge of what was going on in 9-11 therefore they're part of a terrorist organization so he went uh, to court fought against it now he's working on a film about the subject and 9-11's uh, affected everybody I mean, there's not one person in this world who hasn't been affected by it. If you were on the side of the terrorists, you were definitely affected by it because we uh, invaded the countries that actually didn't attack us. And uh, so you're probably actually scot-free if you're in Saudi Arabia. Now, we've got the 28 pages. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit. I'm going to play a report that Darren McBreen put together in our, uh, our short five-minute segment coming up next. Um, but uh, And I'm also going to cover an interview we did last night with a family who is in uh, Nevada, they have a mine there and a family mine they've had since the 1870s. I think Ulysses S. Grant is on the deed. He signed it uh, over to them. And they have been harassed by the government who want this land. They want this 400 acres. And uh, there's the headline right there. Shocking area. 51 family describes bombing, machine gun attacks. That's 50 caliber machine gun attacks and nuclear testing done by the feds. And take a look at this picture right here. This is what they sent me this morning. This is actually a picture that they took. Uh, from their um, from their house, and this is a nuclear blast right here. There's the cat. That's the family cat checking it out, and there are the family, the sh members of the Sheehan family. This was 20 miles from their house. This is what the American government thought of these people. They thought they could open air test nuclear bombs 20 miles from their house. Now, you tell me that is not ludicrous. And uh, if if 
if a government is going to do that, test nuclear bombs next to families and, and homesteads, what makes you think they won't kill three to 4,000 of their own citizens to further their agenda, which is uh, consolidate, consolidate, consolidate? Um, so let's actually, let's go to that BBC video right now. And this is uh, what, what Tony Rook, who's going to be my guest at the bottom of the hour, this is what he was so pissed off about that they would have the gall to talk about a building that collapsed when it's actually standing right behind the reporter. So let's go to that video. Moments ago, I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing, and indeed it has. Apparently that's only a few hundred yards away from where the World Trade Center towers were. And it seems that this was not a result of a new attack. It was because the uh, building had been weakened uh, during this morning's attacks. We'll probably find out more now about that from our correspondent, Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the hey, Salomon Jane. Brothers building What's and its collapse? You? Well, only really what you well, are. Head's know. blocking it, it right now. You can see the corner of World Trade Center down. 7 town in uh, New York behind me down by the World Trade Centers of uh, just an area completely closed off as the rescue workers try to do their job but this isn't the first building that um, has suffered as a result we know that part of the Marriott Hotel next to the World Trade Center also yeah, the building is still on fire behind her smoking and you can see the corner of it behind Jane's head floors of two the two twin towers of the World Trade Center as you can see behind oh, there me, it is the uh, Trade Center they appears to be still it. burning. We see these huge clouds of smoke and ash. And we know that behind that, there's an empty piece of what was a very familiar New York skyline, a symbol of the financial prosperity of this city, but uh, completely So there you go. Now. That We're going to have uh, the story behind that and the, the filmmaker who is so mad he didn't want to pay his BBC license. They call uh, BBC auntie up in or over across the pond in England. But let's get to some 9-11 stuff that may happen today on 9-11. This is from uh, BizPack Review. Cops on high alert for Black Lives Matter violence targeting 9-11 events. Uh, some members of the Black Lives Matter and F-U-K Yo Flag movements are organizing and calling for the murder of more police officers. This is uh, from the Daily Caller. And they have a uh, interesting, scroll down a little bit, guys, and you could show them the, the flyer right there. We are free of your lies. Your world is ended. We will continue without you. On 9-11, we will reveal the truth that will change everything. Together, we are the future, featuring Black Writers Liberation Party, Black Supremacy, and Black Radicals, I guess, of America. So they are planning on uh, doing some events at Stone Mountain, which they claim is a, a, a racist site. Uh, even though it's a mountain and people go there and hang out and uh, families go there. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Daily Caller also picked up on this. Black Lives Matter attacks on 9-11. Uh, be on the lookout alerts from several law enforcement agencies are saying that Black Lives Matter and FYF 9-11 are calling for the murder of police officers. And uh, there's even, if you go back actually to the BizPack Review article, there's another poster down here that shows... I guess what they're planning on, uh, scroll down to the bottom of that, guys. Maybe it's real small on this, but you could see there's a there's a Klan member hung up, and then right next to him, a police officer. So they're equating the police with the Klan, even though uh, it was the, maybe they, the Democratic Party was actually started the Klan. And a lot of these guys, I bet, identify as Democrats. So <laughs> you've got that. If anything happens, or if anybody wants to report on anything uh, having to do with these Black Lives Matter 9-11 uh, style attacks, you can call in at 800-259-9231. I will take your call if you uh, have something to talk about this. If you're at one of these locations, you see something happening, you have breaking news, we will get you on immediately. And uh, But don't call in if it's not about that. If it's not about that, if it's about anything else, I'm not going to take your call. And if you do come on and try to get on, I will cut you off in very quickly. Now, uh, I want to go to the uh, a, an excerpt of an interview we did last night with the Sheehan family. They got they were just on Fox News, and then they called us, or we got in touch with them. They said, "Sure, we'll come on." We did a, about a thirty minute interview, and that is linked in this article. Shocking Area Fifty One describes bombings, machine gun attacks, and nuclear testing by the feds. And so, this is about a minute and a half in. We're going to play a couple minutes of that. So, let's go to that now. The late forties, the. Uh you know, the gunnery range and that had been established. And at that time, they started to strafe the property with, you know, 
aircraft, 50 caliber.